In a previous video we looked at this database of cars and their MOT due date and we created this query which found out all of the cars that are due to have their MOT test done next month. So it's currently June, these are all the ones from July. Um, and I said at the time that if we added some extra information we could use that as the basis of a mail merge to send all of those customers a reminder to tell them their car needs testing. So I'm just going to do that now. I'm just going to add um, the name of the customer, title, forename, surname and also where they live, street, town, postcode. So I'm going to save that. Let's just check that it looks okay. So it's still got the same three cars but with the additional information. Uh, that's good. So I'm now going to close that database. don't need that um, anymore. And I'm going to go to Word. So if I want to create a mail merge in Word, I need this mailings tab on the toolbar. And what we do is we work through this start mail merge section from left to right to begin with. So the first thing we want to do is to say what it is we're actually trying to make. So you can create things like uh, labels if you want to, you know, print labels for invitations, Christmas cards, etc. Um, but in this particular case, I'm going to write people a letter to tell them the MOT test is due. So I'm just going to choose letter. And what that does is that affects the layout of the document, but this is still um, a straightforward page. And then um, what I'm going to do is select the next button. So select recipients. And you can create a database in Word itself, but I'm going to use an existing list. So I'm going to use my um, access database that we just looked at. So that's stored in the databases folder on my desktop. And it was called this one, Prices Motors. So we get a choice of all of the different objects in the database. So I've got one query and one table. So if I want to um, send the letter to people whose MOT is due next month, it makes sense to use the query that I've already created. So we'll have a look at that first. Obviously in a controlled assessment task or a practical exam that might uh, not be possible. You might be requested to create the letter from the table. So we'll also have a look at that in a minute. So I've selected uh, where the information is going to come from. If we click on the edit recipient list we can check that it's got the right people. So we can see that it's chosen those three cars and the information uh, that we can include in our letter. So the next stage then really is to write the letter as though we were typing it. The only difference is where there would be any personalized information we use fields from the database. So we might start off the letter you know dear such and such. So rather than typing their name we use this button here insert merge field. So traditionally with a letter you just use the title and the surname so you say dear Mrs Smith, dear Mr Talbot for example. Um, so I'm going to choose title and then I'm going to choose surname. So we still need to put spaces between these just as though they were words and then we can include uh, information uh, that we want to put in the letter. So obviously um, in a real exam situation or a real piece of coursework you'd make this a bit more um, verbose. You'd make your letter, you know, you'd include some pleasantries at the start. So thank you for being a customer, etc. Uh, if you don't know, if you no longer own this car, then uh, please let us know that kind of thing. Um, but we can include information about the car. So your, um, uh, we could have make and model um, is due to be tested next month on um, so we can include the exact date if we want to make the per let the person know so MOT is the actual date wasn't it um, so that's the kind of gist of the letter really you add a bit more to it than that um, and then usually at the top of the letter you'd have the recipient's address and usually you'd include the full name there so I'm going to go for title uh, and space full name surname now because I've got paragraph spacing set here and I don't want big gaps in my address I'm going to use shift enter to move on to the next line. So I'm going to include uh, street, I'm going to include town and I'm going to include the postcode. So that's all the relevant address information from my database and usually as well um, 
we have that over on the right hand side so I'm going to use the ruler in Word to uh, pop that over there. Now obviously uh, we'd add additional information you might want to include references you might want to include information about um, servicing special offers the date uh, that we're sending the letter for example but that'll do for now. So we've included um, these pieces of information but we can't see uh, whether that's actually going to work. So if we want to see what it would look like with the data in, we can click on this button here that says preview results. And if we do that, what it will do is it will swap these fields for the actual information. Now I've just noticed actually that that is a bit too far over. It's wrapping the surname. So that's, there we go. Um, so if we click on preview results, we can see that it includes the first record from that query. And I can use the, the buttons up here, the backwards and forwards buttons, to move between the different records. And there are only three of them, so um, that's all of them. So that's looking OK. Once we're happy with that, we can use this final button, um, Finish and Merge. If we click on there, um, we get a choice. So you can either just print them straight off, or if you want to save them, so if, or if you're going to email them, for example, you can um, click on the Edit Individual Documents button. And what that does is it creates a new document um, with one page for each uh, letter. So the first page is a letter to Mr. Talbot Tagora, the second page is to Mrs. Morris Oxford, but it's the same letter just with the personalised information in it. This is a, a separate document so I can close that and go back to my letter. So that's the basic process for a mail merge. I said also that I would show you um, how it works if you're using a table. It's basically the same process. So I'm going to go back here to select recipients and I'm going to choose instead of the query, I'm going to choose the table. So um, just choose the file again. And I'm going to choose the table this time. So notice when I click on edit recipients, I see all of the cars from the table and all of the information. So what I can do is I can tick the boxes um, for the um, customers that I want to receive a letter so it'll only go to the ones with ticks in and by default they're all ticked. Also at the top of each column um, we've got some sort of crude um, faltering, uh, filtering so um, it hasn't got the list that you see in Excel although you can do things like um, this so if you choose the advanced option then you can say things like I don't know title is equal to um, Mr for example and that would show you uh, all the people whose title was Mr. So if we go back to all, um, the filtering for dates isn't particularly um, sophisticated. So the, probably the best thing you can do is sort into order of date. Also, access is a little bit tricky when it comes to date formats. So notice these are stored, even though they look right in my original database and in my query, these are actually appearing in American date format with the month first. So if I sort those into ascending order, um, it does work. So probably the best thing we can do with those is to sort them into order and then pick out manually um, the ones that we want to send them to. So if I untick them all first and then probably just probably the easiest thing to do is just to range these um, so there is well the bottom two we don't want to send and then it's the three above that so it's slightly more fiddly to use the um, the table particularly if we want to do operations on dates if we just if there was just a nice yes or no column or um, you know if the the criteria was simple to filter the results it wouldn't be so bad but from then on it's the same so once we click on OK and um, we get exactly the same results from from then onwards